Hey everyone, Barnix here. I don't just look at this camera and say funny words and you guys listen and like what I say. No, I actually also work quite a bit behind the scenes here at Bite Me Games, doing various stuff such as the narrative design, I'm the creative director as well, I'm the producer, I make sure that everyone else has work to do. I do all of our accounting, our business development, 3D modeling and 2D art and basically everything that's not programming. And all of that requires a lot of time. But I don't want to just work eternally. I want to be smart with how I do this. And I've mentioned before, you know, I'm quite into the productivity like rabbit hole. So in this video, I want to talk about eight different ways that I manage my time. And I think that there are some really good ones in here that you probably need to hear in order to also just have more time to work on your games. So you can just do more in the same amount of time. You're not just wasting time by like not working efficiently. And the first thing that I would really want to start with is that you shouldn't go for perfection. And I don't mean this in like your, your final game is not going to be perfect because it won't be. But even in like all of the small tasks that you do every day, accept that you won't reach perfection and that if you do reach perfection, it wouldn't be worth it with like how much time you put into it. You're much better off just doing like certain tasks a lot instead of spending a lot of time on it trying to get it polished the first time. Do it like five times and you'll get a better end result by the fifth time than at the beginning. I think the best example I can give of this is these videos. You probably have noticed they're not perfect. There's plenty of things wrong with them. Maybe there's more B roll that could be put there. My transitions aren't as smooth. The music sometimes doesn't align, but I still feel like this is good enough. And I mean, you guys agree as well because you love watching these videos and we've been having massive growth. So thanks for that. Because in the end, the main reason you watch is the words that I say and like the meaning behind it to inspire you to work more. I could spend more time in it, but it wouldn't be worth it in the end. There's this also this concept called the Pareto's principle, which means that 20% of the effort for like making like the perfect thing already delivers 80% of the results. And this is true. Just make more, but don't waste time and like making it perfect, make it like a seven out of 10 or an eight out of 10. Be like happy with it for the most part. Be like, okay, whatever, I can live with this. And then just continue on to the next task. This goes with models as well. My models are not perfect at all. Hell, I think they're quite bad still, but they're still good enough for the most part and just get through them and do more instead of being stuck on the same thing all the time. The next thing you should do or well, shouldn't do really is spend time on things that you're not good at. A great example of this is I I am not a programmer. I'm at best a three or a four out of 10 programmer. And I'm surrounded in the team by a bunch of other programmers who are much better at it than me. So if I'm working on a game and there's like this little thing that I look at and I'm like, oh, if I could tweak the code a little bit, it'll fix this. I spend like five minutes on it. If I can't fix it within five minutes, well, I just don't like deal with it anymore. And I just send a message to someone else to go and solve it because I know my strengths are somewhere else and I should spend as much of the time that I have working on my strengths, such as managing our business or making these videos, instead of trying to figure out like how this certain piece of code works that I've never seen before. And yeah, I could learn like how it all works, but then once again, I'm just spending time on something that there's not really a need for because we have the other people in the team, like I said, and like, I have other talents as well. So focus on what you're good at and don't spend too much time working on something when you know that you're not the best man for the job. If you're a solo developer, this can be really hard, of course, because you don't just have another teammate to offload stuff to. But then there's some point where you sometimes just need to look at throwing some money at the screen and getting someone on Fiverr, for example, to do things for you. The next thing I do is I generally try to break up my day into three hour blocks, where for three hours at a time, I work on one thing. That's usually the longest I can can focus on like one certain task without like my brain telling me to just like end it all and just to stop working. So how this may look is, for example, from six to nine in the morning, I wake up and I start editing videos. That's something that I usually do in the morning because it does require quite a bit of focus. And then once that's done, I go and take a break. I go to the gym, I go somewhere else and I just like don't think about work for like an hour or so. Then I have another block of three hours basically where I go and then maybe I go and like fix some bugs or add some more translations and improve the games that we're working on. Or I go in concept and I think about like story and narrative for our next game. And once again, three hours in usually, it's like, this has been enough. Let's take another break. And I usually go like grocery shopping or some other like boring stuff or like clean the house for a bit just to like decompress for a while. And then once again, three hours of working on something. Usually I start with in the morning with what requires the most focus and it's like the hardest mentally. And then 
In the evenings, usually it's something like, for example, 3D modeling or replying to your guys' coaching emails. It's things that I don't need to like fully like focus on. I can do this with like a reduced mental state because generally they're a bit easier and less impactful. There's also the whole concept of deep work and things like that. You can look into it, but generally don't just from nine to five nonstop, like on like, I'm gonna do just this and don't really get up. I think that regular nine to five isn't really that great. And you have to remember you're if you're a social developer especially if you're independent use your independence you can do much more with knowing what works best for you and just shifting your hours and how you work instead of adhering to this like forced upon you like oh you should work nine to five even though like research shows that it's by far not the most efficient way to work next up is having dedicated days for certain tasks this is something that I didn't do before, but a while ago, one of you guys actually commented this and I've been trying it out and it's actually quite nice. So what that means is that, for example, I say one day is just for like YouTube related stuff, for example. So that's like editing videos, scripting videos, recording videos, and like responding to your guys' comments and like questions and things like that. I try to group that all together. So like one day is my YouTube brain day. And then one day maybe I put on the Forge industry where I just go and through the UI. I like look at bug reports. I respond to like questions regarding the game, go through the stats and things like that and work on making that one better. And then you can guess another day I spend time just working mainly on our next game. So I put on like some soundtrack and I start like prototyping the story or start working out how should certain mechanics work. And I spent most of the time, but I still split it up in those blocks. But all of those blocks are related back to like that certain topic of the day. And speaking of days, this next one, it's probably gonna be a bit extreme, but it comes down to no days off. This is something that probably a lot of people are like, ho, 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 I need my time and it's fine. But I feel like, you know, I'm young. I still have the energy to do this. I should just keep going and keep going hard. And also one of my game dev idols is John Carmack. And I am nowhere near like his level where he like works like 90 hour weeks every week. But I still do think that, you know, I've said it before, like you keep the momentum. If you don't take a day off, you're always gonna be busy with your game. And it doesn't mean that you need to work eight hours every single day it's just keep working on it every single day in the weekend i don't work eight hours usually i do still work quite a bit but it's more calm and i just keep moving the needle forward every single day i think that's also a lot and it gives you a lot of extra time to work weekends are your superpower said someone i forgot who but i do think that it is a true statement next up is never postpone something often i get these messages from for example thomas that is like hey we should think about this some point or like we need to plan our, our like strategy or like our vision here we should do this at some point and it's like you know it's an up in the air at some point whether that's like tomorrow or like in a week nobody really knows and what you should then cultivate is just being like I have time now let's just do it right now why would you wait I think there's a lot of power in that and like why would you have all of these different loops open basically of all these things you need to do at some point if you can just immediately just close that loop and fix it and what work on some other stuff. And then you don't have to waste like, you know, you have like idle energy that is being wasted on being like, oh yeah, that's right. We need to do this at some point. And never postpone isn't just when someone tells you like we should do something. It's also when you just think about something. For example, I think like, oh, maybe I can task another developer like what they did or like how their experience was developing their game or releasing their game, for example, because they released similarly close to us. But I noticed that a lot of people are scared of interacting with other people. We're game developers. We're usually more introverted than shy but there's no point in like being like oh maybe i annoy them if you annoy them they won't respond like whatever but if you don't send them a message they'll also never respond just send them a message the moment that you think about i should be like reaching out to this person for example it's gonna save you a lot of time of like going back and forth. Should I send them? But what if like I don't formulate my email well or my message? Doesn't matter. And if it's really important, this is gonna be the hardest one. If it's really important what you're working on, don't send a message, just call. Just be like, I'm gonna pick up the phone now and I'm gonna have this answer in two minutes. I don't care. The other person probably is gonna be bothered that much. They're just gonna be wondering like, what's the sound that my phone is suddenly making? It's been like five years since I've heard this for the last time. And then next up is track everything. We've talked in some videos already about how we use stuff like GitLab boards to track issues for how we make our game and like what needs to be implemented. But don't just track for your games, track everything in your life. 
use a calendar, create like simple to-do lists. I don't care how you track it, but everything that you ever need to do, make sure that you have it indexed somewhere that like these are stuff that you still need to follow up on, for example, or that you still need to do. Because it's really easy once you're like getting some momentum and you're getting like more popular, so to say, to get swamped with like things. People will be asking you stuff, people will be reaching out. You're gonna get more and more responsibility as well. And at a certain point, your brain is gonna start slipping up. I, for a long time, I prided myself in, I don't forget much. If someone like references something to me like half a year ago, I can probably still recall that. But even I was now getting into a point where recently I told you you could apply for like free coaching. And I got so many emails that I like in my mailbox, some of them even just got lost and I didn't respond to them for like a week or so because I didn't even know I had to respond to them anymore. I'm sorry to the people I didn't respond to on time. All of you should have an email now. But that's basically when I realized my oh, I'm actually making a bit too many mistakes now. Let me solve this immediately. And that's when actually this last point came in and that is use email rules. This is something that I used a lot in my old job before. I had like my whole email structured in like folders and everything was neatly organized. And there I had rules set up that mails from certain people would immediately go to different inboxes depending on like how important it is or they would get like muted and deleted. But I never did that for like now that I was working as a game developer. And because of that, my inbox was just swamped full and I just lost track of something and don't ever lose track basically. And setting up emails and like an email structure and things like that is actually some of the most high ROI things you can do. It took me to go through like my backlog of more than one and a half years of emails. It took me about 30 minutes to go through it all and to create like new folders in Outlook to put them in there and then set up some rules that emails from like our accountant would automatically go into the accountant folder and like our receipts would automatically go into receipts folders and get forwarded to our accountant as well. Things like that. And it's just, it declutters your life so much. And what it also does is if you do get an email, it's usually an important one because all of the unimportant ones, you should be filtering out through all of your rules that you don't get like interrupted with whatever work you're doing. So I can now open my inbox and every email in my inbox, I have like three things in there right now. It's all things that I need to follow up as soon as possible. And this is another way that you can track like, oh, have like a to-do list or just look at my outlook and be like, I need to respond to this person. He needs like some assets. This guy needs an answer to his coaching. And this guy also just wants some feedback or we need to reach out to a publisher, things like that. Email rules, it sounds very boring, but it's gonna save you a lot of time and like a lot of headache. And yeah, that's basically eight of the ways that I manage my time and that I use to make my work more efficient. I'm curious, do you guys have anything else that you use that works particularly well for you? I love to interact with you guys. Thanks for like all of the feedback lately. It's really nice to learn from other game devs as well, because of course, nobody is perfect in the end and just our hive mind can achieve a lot. If you're new here, we're a game development studio, as you may have noticed, and we make two videos every week. We talk about various different topics such as game design or we talk about our experiences when we launched our own first game or when we go to, for example, Gamescom in a few weeks, we're gonna make a vlog about that as well and just bring you guys along. So if that's something that interests you, be sure to go ahead and leave us a like and also maybe subscribe down below as it really helps us out. That's all I really had to say. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.